Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing Kubuntu in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive or DVD. Kubuntu is a Linux OS based on Ubuntu but uses KDE Plasma for the desktop instead of GNOME. KDE Plasma provides greater control over the appearance and behavior and if you're coming from Windows you'll probably feel more comfortable with using it over GNOME. And KDE Plasma is now surprisingly lightweight, often using less resources than GNOME, so it can make Kubuntu feel faster and more responsive. So I'm going to go and download it. Going to kubuntu.org. Download. And then there's the latest version, 25.04. And then there's 24.10. And I want the LTS version, long-term support as there's going to be security and maintenance updates until April 2027. Compared to the other versions where there's only updates until July 2025 and January 2026. So I'm going to download the LTS version. Once downloaded, go into your downloads folder and then select the image and I'm going to mount it. So hit enter or right click and mount. Open. And so this will put it onto a virtual drive. In my case here, it's put it onto drive D. And now I'm going to go into disk management. So I'm in disk management and we see the ISO on drive D. And then there's my C drive. And now I'm going to make space for Kubuntu, the ISO file, and also as well as for Kubuntu itself. So the ISO file we see here, it's about 4.22 gigabytes. And I'm going to use 50 gigabytes for Kubuntu itself, so about 54 gigabytes. And in my free space here, I have 406 gigabytes available, so I have more than enough free space. So I'm going to shrink my C drive, shrink, and I'll do 54,000, or roughly 54 gigabytes there, shrink. All right, and so there's my unallocated space. And now I'm going to create a new partition, and this will be for the Kubuntu installation media. So I'm going to right click on my unallocated space, new simple volume, next, and I'll put 4500, next, and it's going to be assigning it to the F drive, next. I'm going to set it as FAT32 as the file system, and I'll just call it Kubuntu underscore ISO, next, finish. All right, we see my new F drive here. I'm going to go back into Explorer. I'm going to copy everything on the D drive and go to my F drive and paste. All right, the files have been copied over and going back into disk management. And so your BIOS should be able to detect the installation media and be able to boot from it. But if not, it may be because it's seen as a basic data partition and it will need to be seen as an EFI system partition instead. So I'm going to go and change that. I'm going to open up disk parts. I'm going to run it as administrator. Yes, type in list disk. And so I only have one disk on here, so it's going to be disk zero. I'm going to select it and list my partitions. And so it's partition number four, the 4,500 megabyte partition. Select partition four. I'm going to type in help set ID and I'm going to scroll up and going to get the EFI system partition value in hex. I'm going to copy and I'm going to type in set ID equals and then paste and then enter. All right, we see here disk part successfully set the partition ID and we see here in disk management it has been changed as well. And now I'm going to restart my computer and go into the BIOS. So in my boot options, I have the Windows Boot Manager. So this will boot Windows. And then the second option here is UFI OS. And UFI OS is the Kubuntu installation media. How I know that, if I go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as admin, type in bcd edit forward slash enum space firmware. And can see at the bottom there, seen as partition F, which is the F drive, which was created and then the description UFI OS. So I'll need to set it as boot option number one and then save changes and exit. If your BIOS has a boot override section as seen here, you can do a one-time boot into it as an option 
So I'll just select UFI OS and then hit enter. All right, it's booted into the installation media partition and we seek try or install Kubuntu, Kubuntu safe graphics, OEM install, boot from next volume, UFI firmware settings. So I'm gonna go into try or install Ubuntu. All right, Kubuntu has started and I got here select your language, internet connection, I have a wired connection and also as well as I can connect through Wi-Fi. In this install, I'm going to do wired. And when you're ready, just select install Kubuntu. And you can always try it as well, going to try Kubuntu. And if you go into it, it'll go into the live environment. And then so I'm going to close this. And when ready, you can just go into install Kubuntu. And it'll start the installer. Got the welcome screen here. I'm going to hit next. Next is asking for your location. Hit next. Your keyboard. Hit next. And here is asking for the installation mode. And I'm going to keep it as the default. So normal installation, web browser utilities, office software games, and media players. And then this option here is to download and install updates following the installation. So this will save time after installation and keeps your system secure. So I'm going to select that. And also as well as if you want to install any additional third party packages. If you're not sure, you don't have to add in any additional third party packages. And of course, you can always add these afterwards. Hit next. And then you get this screen here asking you to select your storage device. So I only have my one drive here. So we got three options here. The first option is install alongside this is the most common option. And if you select it, so you select a partition that you have. And so my yellow partition here, that's SDA3, the NTFS partition, so it would be my C drive. And if I select it, and then I can resize it to make room. Now, of course, I already have free space for it that I have set aside in Windows. And also as well as you can see down here at the bottom, the EFI system partition, it's going to use SDA1. And it's common for it to use the same EFI partition as Windows for the Kubuntu OS boot files, but this can be an issue as Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in this partition, which would include the Kubuntu OS boot files. And this can happen, for example, after a Windows update. So to avoid this, I'm going to be creating a separate EFI partition just for the Kubuntu boot files. I'm not going to be using this first option here, the install alongside option. And the second option is replace a partition. And I don't want to replace anything. So I'm not going to be using this option. What I'm going to be using is the third option, manual partitioning, which gives me full control of what I want to do. And then hit next. And so we see here that it lists all my partitions and a free space. So this is my Windows EFI partition. SDA2, this is a Microsoft Reserved partition. SDA3, this is my C drive, the NTFS partition. SDA4 is the Kubuntu ISO installation media partition. And then there's my free space. And SDA5 is my Microsoft recovery partition. And so I'm going to use the free space here to create my new partitions. So the first partition I'm going to create is an EFI system partition, specifically just for Kubuntu. And then the file system will be FAT32. And the mount point will be slash boot slash EFI. And then the label, I'll label it as EFI Kubuntu. And then the flags will be boot and then OK. Go back to the free space, create. And then I'm going to create a swap partition. I have 12 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to do 12 gigs. I'm going to swap. And then the label, just call it swap. And then the flags, swap, OK. Go back to the free space, create. And to make this simple, I'm just going to use the rest of the free space for slash. So file system ext4, mount point slash. And I'm just going to call it root, OK. All right, so there are my three new partitions. And then I'm going to go to next. And it's asking you for your name, username, computer name, and password. And it's asking here to log in automatically without asking for the password. I prefer to put in my password, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. Next. 
end this screen and we'll summarize everything that it's going to do. And then when ready, hit install. Install now. All right, so it's going to install. And at the bottom right, you can select on the icon here. And it's going to show the logs and everything that it's doing. And you can select it again just to get out of it. And it's going to install, and this will take a little bit of time. All right, Kubuntu has been installed on your computer. And you may now restart into your new system or continue using the Kubuntu Live environment. Before restarting, I'm just going to check my boot order. So I'm going to open up a console. And I'm going to type in EFI Boot Manager. And so we see at the top there the boot order 0, then 3, 4, 2, then 1. So 0 is Ubuntu. And then 3 is the Windows Boot Manager. 4 is UFI OS. And the reason why it says Ubuntu instead of Kubuntu is because Kubuntu is based off of it. So that's the reason why it shows up as that. And so from this, it should boot into it. But to confirm, I'm going to restart my computer and go into the BIOS. I'm going to hit Done. So in my BIOS boot order, I have number one is the Windows Boot Manager, number two is UFI OS, and number three is Ubuntu. Even though earlier, Ubuntu was seen as number one. So I'm going to change this, and then now save changes and exit. All right, Grub comes up, the boot loader. And we got Kubuntu, and then it's also detected Windows, so that's good. So I'm going to go into Kubuntu. I'm going to log in. All right, got the welcome screen for KDE Plasma. I'm going to close. And now I'm in Kubuntu. And now I'm going to restart and confirm I can get back into Windows. All right, back at Grub, and I'm going to select Windows. Log in. Going to open up disk management. All right, and so there are my three partitions for Kubuntu, slash, swap, and the EFI partition for it. And so the installation media partition, you can delete it. And you have to do it through disk part, as if you try to right click, the delete volume option is grayed out. So I'm going to go into disk part as administrator. Yes. List my disk. It's going to be disk zero. List my partitions. And it'll be partition number four. Select partition four and delete partition override. Enter. Exit out. And then now I can extend my C drive. So that's it. That's how you can install Kubuntu in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive or DVD. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.